of the statistics we have discussed thus far, such as various measures of central tendency or the measures of variability or plotting the distribution are descriptive statistics. They are useful for summarizing the data. For example, we can describe the finance majors in terms of average high school GPA or average SAT scores, but if we want to know whether the average GPA for finance majors is different than let's say history majors, we will need to use inferential statistics. To do that, we can set up an experiment where we find the mean GPA for finance majors and the mean history majors GPAs, and then use test statistics to compare the two means. In practice, it is generally difficult or inefficient to get the GPA for every single finance and history major on the planet, which is also called our population. So we rely on random sampling to make things easier for us. So once we settle on a sample and collect the data, we then calculate a statistic such as mean, median, mode, standard deviation, etc. Then we use a statistical test such as a z-test or a t-test for making our inference. A z-test is a statistical test used to determine whether two population or sample means are different when population variances are known and or the sample size is large. Z-test statistic or a z-score measures how many standard deviations away is the sample mean from the population mean. Here is the formula for calculating a z-score. z equals to x minus the population mean divided by the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of number of observation. Let's look at an example. Assume the average test scores for exam 1 is 70, and the standard deviation of the exam 1 scores is 10. Assume that the student number 9 scored 86.5 on the exam. Note that we are only looking at one score of 86.5 and hence n equals to 1 in this case. Here is how we will calculate the z-score. z equals to 86.5 minus the mean of 70 divided by the standard error of 10, which gives us a z-score of 1.65. So the score of 86.5 is 1.65 standard deviations away from the mean score of 70. We can convert the z-score into probability using a z-table. So a z-score of 1.65 corresponds to the probability of 95.05%. It means that about 95% of the scores on exam 1 are lower than 86.5, or roughly 5% of students scored 86.5 or higher. Now let's say instead of one score, we randomly select four scores, and the average of the four scores is 74. In this case, the z-score is calculated as follows. z equals to 74 minus 70 divided by the standard error which is calculated as the standard deviation of 10 divided by square root of n which is 4 in this case. This gives us a z-score of 0.8. Looking at the z-table, we find that the probability associated with the z-score of 0.8 is 78.81%. Hence the probability of finding a sample of 4 scores with an average of 74 is 100 minus 78.81% or 21.19%. Now let's say you don't know the average score for exam 1. However, you know your score and the scores of 8 of your other friends. You calculated the average score for 9 students, 8 friends scores and 1 yours as 72. Now if someone asks you what is the average score for exam 1 for the entire class, your best guess is 72 which is also called a point estimate of the population mean as it is just one number. Alternatively, we can calculate the range of possible values for the unknown class average score. This is known as confidence interval. Let's start with our z-score formula and let's call our sample mean as x-bar. So z equals to x-bar minus mu which is the population mean which we don't know in this case divided by the standard error which is again recall standard error equals to the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Rearranging the equation gives us mu equals to x-bar minus z times the standard error. This becomes the left or the lower bound for the confidence interval. And x bar plus z times standard error becomes the right or the upper bound for the confidence interval. To find the z for the confidence interval formula, first we need to pick a level of confidence we want. The most common ones are 90%, 95% or 99%. Let's assume we want to be 95% confident or 2.5% in each tails. Then looking at the z table for 97.5% or 0.975, we find that the z score of 1.96 corresponds to the probability of 97.5%.
Now let's plug in the numbers we know into the formula x bar of 72, population variance of 10, and sample size or n of 9. The lower bound of confidence interval is given by 72 minus 1.96 times 10 divided by square root of 9 or 3. This is equal to 65.467. And the upper bound of the confidence interval is given by 72 plus 1.96 times 10 divided by 3, which is equal to 78.533. Hence, we are 95% confident that the average exam's one score for the entire class is between 65.467 and 78.533. In this example, we knew the population variance of 10, but in the real world, more than likely, we will not know the population variance. In this case, the preferred statistical test is the t-test. The formula for calculating the confidence interval using a t distribution remains similar to a z distribution. We only change the z distribution to a t distribution. T distribution has a fatter tail as compared to a z distribution. The t distribution is completely characterized by one parameter degrees of freedom of n minus 1. So the lower bound of confidence interval using a t distribution is given by x bar minus t with n minus 1 degrees of freedom times the standard error and x bar plus t with n minus 1 degrees of freedom times standard error becomes the right or the upper bound of the confidence interval. Continuing on our example of a sample of 9 scores for exam 1 with the mean of 72 and now let's assume that the standard deviation for the 9 sample scores is 12. Note that this is different than the population standard deviation. We already learned how to calculate the standard deviation for the sample in the previous videos. Looking at the t-table with n minus 1 or 8 degrees of freedom for a 95% confidence interval or 2.5% in each tail is 2.306. Hence, the lower bound of the confidence interval is given by 72 minus 2.306 times 12 divided by 3, which is equal to 65.082. And the upper bound of confidence interval is 72 plus 2.306 times 12 divided by 3 or 78.918. Hence, in this case, when we don't know the population variance and using a t-distribution, we are 95% confident that the average exam and score for the entire class is somewhere between 65.082 and 78.918. Note that for a larger sample with number of observations greater than 30, z-statistics approaches a t-statistic. And hence, use of either is acceptable even with the unknown population variance. That's all for this video and in the next video we'll see how we can use Python to calculate our confidence.